In this video, I will guide you through setting up the camel game. I have done a couple of lectures on this before. We've actually done the whole thing in class. Some students missed it. So 3.5 the camel, if you click on the link provided in the assignment, that'll take you to the book page with all the instructions. I already have that open. Uh, this one right here. There's a picture of a camel and uh, Camel is an old game, and there's some information about the history in the page of the book. Uh, it was actually published uh, in a uh, book for basic games. Back in the day, we had to uh, type our code and get the program to run in a computer. This one may have been originally done for the Apple II, although if you knew basic back then, and most everybody that knew anything about computers probably knew basic, we're able to just put it in the um, in the system and make it run. So this is a text game and there's no graphics even though there's a picture of the camel you will not actually see a camel it's all going to be uh, guided through text. Here's a sample run of the game it has an introduction and this is what you see you don't see a video you just see the description welcome to camel and what the situation is you've stolen a camel you're escaping from the natives and uh, you have, I think, three drinks of water, and you have 200 miles to go. Every time that you travel, you can go either fast or slow. Uh, the natives move at a steady pace behind you, and they're angry, and they want to uh, get to you. So uh, you have to take care of the rider. You have to take care of the camel. Uh, the camel needs rest. You need water. And the... Uh, Apparently, the natives don't need much. They just keep on coming and coming and coming. So there's a, an update that you will see occasionally, how, much, how long you have traveled, how close the natives are, uh, some messages that tell you the situation, whether you won, you lost, you quit, etc. So to get started here, there's 20-something steps, I think, 25. I think that by the time you get to uh, 23, this right here, this is the end. This is the winning situation. If a user has traveled 200 miles, then if you want to add some excitement, that is, you know, make it uh, some, some things randomly appear, uh, you can change it, to make it more challenging, etc. Uh, but if you get, uh, you don't need those last two steps, probably. I'll guide you through at least, I think, 15 or 16. When it comes time, I'll know what to stop. Okay, so I'm going to also open up a new tab and go to the collab and get a new file going so a new notebook and i will preemptively call this give it a name well i guess until i start typing i don't get to do that so the directions tell you to, well, you can forego part one. You don't need to create a new directory since we're doing this online. Uh, so call your file whatever you want. That would call it camel game and then your name. If you're going to be using the collab, which is fine, uh, make sure that you share the file so that I can actually grade it. Uh, otherwise, if you're running a separate IDE, maybe you're running idle instead, uh, make sure to save it as a PI file, PY and then turn that in. In step two, uh, we're not here quite yet at this level in the class about creating a, uh, a main function or any functions at all. But since it's not too difficult, I'm just going to tell you ahead of time, if you're doing this in order, that in the next unit, you will be doing functions. Basically, Python has lots of functions. One of them is print. For example, things that do things, Part of the program that do things for you uh, and that we can make our own functions in this case we're going to create one that's called main and that's where our program is going to live the older directions for this game don't deal with a main function but since uh, i guess as time progresses we want to think more about uh, object-oriented programming we want to basically run everything out of a function and during the coding of this uh, game i'll tell you where you can add more functions to make the uh, the code a little bit tighter, make the game a little bit easier to understand for the future programmer that will read the code. So the first thing is we have to tell it to print 
a screen with the welcome message, welcome to Camel, and what the situation is. They tell you to do it in multiple print statements. Don't necessarily use the slash n to break it up. There's multiple ways of doing that, but I yes, I think that we are going to stick with the print statements. And rather than typing a lot of this stuff, I'm going to be copying and pasting. That's why I selected this text. I'm going to right click and copy. Go to my code and then just dump it in with a control V as in Victor. There's the message. That's what it's supposed to look like. I'm going to uh, give it the print functions line by line. Although, lest I forget that the author wants us to create this uh, uh, function called main. So right before that starts, I'm going to add a couple of spaces and I'm going to define DEF uh, main function. Main and then parentheses open and close. And then the colon to say this is where the block begins. I'll press enter. My tab is now set. And this is where the prints will begin. So the first message, print, uh, parentheses, and then open quote. I'm going to copy the print, parentheses, open quote. I press control C to copy. And then as I type everything else, or rather as I consider what the other text should be, I'm just going to copy and paste the print before that starts. The closing, you can do the same. You can type all of this independently. It's up to you. I think it's better if you type it, but I've typed this so much or so many times that I just rather copy and paste. I don't really need that first one. However, I do need to uh, be conscious of the tab spacing. So although I'm pressing tab, I think there's two spaces that this particular program is using to uh, tab our code to get the block going. So I'm defining the main function. Everything in this program will live in the function. We can check it out by keeping going on the code and then just telling the program, well, I have a function that's already been defined. Now I need to run it. This will be uh, at the very leftmost of the code, say main, open parentheses, and that will call the function into being, or rather into running. So if I were to press play, give it a shot while well, actually give it a second, uh, Google has now returned the uh, function running. Welcome to Camel, you have stolen, etc. Well, we know what it's going to print. It's all right there. But now the user would see these directions. So I now can forego anything after line seven because it's only calling the function. I need to go back to the function itself and keep on working with the directions given in the book. So we have called the function main and we tested the program. Now, step three, continue from the prior step and create a Boolean variable called done. So this is the flag that's going to be set to false. Are we done yet? No, it's false. We're still going. That's what tells the, uh, the uh, logic to keep on going. So right off here right after we uh, give the uh, message i'm going to put a comment and just say uh, define variables and the first one is called done is equal to and we're setting it as false as a boolean it's it can have one of two uh, values either true or false and it's not quote false you know to say that's a string it's capital F A L S E. The system recognizes it, and that's why it's telling me, Do you mean false? Yes, that's what I mean. Done is false. The game has not ended. We're going to create a while loop that will keep going while done is false. So, while done is false, and that reads very much like the code should read like. So, while done, the value is equal to false. The author will later tell you that you could also say, while well, not done, we'll get to that maybe, or maybe you'll get to that if uh, I don't get that far in this video. I'm going to put in the colon to start the uh, block, and here's where the programming begins. Well, the meat of the program. We've already created the loop. Inside of the loop, print out the following. So this is the menu of options. You can drink from your canteen. You can go ahead at moderate speed, so you can go slow. 
or you can go at full speed, you can go fast. You can stop for the night and you'll need to stop for the night if your camel is tired. Status check, we'll just go and check all the variables and tell the player what's going on, how far they've gone, how tired they are, uh, or you can just quit. So, which is the letter Q, A, B, C, D, E, and Q. I'm going to copy this text because unlike the message, I'm going to, well, first I have to be in the right place. I have to be two spaces in for the block inside of the while loop because the program, which is actually inside of a function, all also resides inside of the while loop. So um, since I'm already here and notice how it's two spaces inside of the block for the while loop, the while loop itself is two spaces inside of the function. So it's all stacked neatly. So let's check what the directions say. Well, actually directions for the next thing say something else, but I need to say inside the loop, we're gonna print this out. And the reason why I copied everything is because, yes, we could print every statement one by one. And if you do that, that's great, fine. But there's another way of doing it. And that is to print, open the parentheses, and then use three quotes. And that tells that there's a block of text coming. I'm going to then close the quote at the very end of quit with three quotes and close parentheses. And it recognizes that the print statement begins here and it ends down here. While done is false, print this. So it's false and it's going to be false until we tell it to do something else. So if I were to run this code right now, I would get stuck in a loop which would be simple enough to get out of if I were running idle or an external um, text editor. But here I've had bad luck with getting stuck in a loop and then struggling to stop the online uh, thing. So I'm going to go down here on the loop and just go on to the next step. Ask the user for their choice. So make sure to add the space before the quote, and that is to say, so what is your choice, question mark, and then add a space so that whatever they type in, in this case, they're quitting, there's a space. So what is your choice? Let's say, I think it's going to be, they, they tell us what to use. This user underscore choice is going to be the, uh, the value they recommend. So I'm going to say user underscore choice. is equal to the input of the text, uh, what is your choice? There's that question mark and a space. So ideally, when I run this, I should be able to see the welcome message, uh, set the false in done, and see the uh, menu of options, and then stop when the computer asks, what is your choice? Let me run that. I have a syntax error, done. Eh, while well, done is equal to false, and I'm thinking, I'm thinking in basic from 20 years ago, this is Python, a modern language. So while well, done is equal to false, to get the, uh, the check there as equal, you have to use two equal, equal signs, equal, equal, false. I'll run again, and sure enough, here's my welcome message. Here's my uh, menu of choices, and then it's asking me, what is your choice? And I will stop that because there's no options for me to select, really, because nothing will happen. All it's doing is going to ask me. One thing that I notice, though, is that welcome to camel, all the directions, etc., and then the menu are kind of stuck to each other, and by that I mean there's no spacing. You know how if you're going to type a paper, it's better to do a double space just to get the spaces going, easier to read. I'm going to try to do a little bit of that. And by that I mean, welcome to camel, the message is fine. And then after natives, it goes right into the menu. In the, before the letter A is displayed here, now nah, I'm not going to mess with the menu. I'm going to use the message itself. Before the quote closes, I'm going to add a... Uh, a uh, diagonal n slash n like that black slash an n that will tell it go to the next nine if i test that will it look better yes the natives etc and then because i get an extra space because of that slash n 
not backslash n, it's a slash n. So the slash n on my keyboard, at least, it's uh, next to the uh, brackets tab, upper right. Okay. So, back in the book. We've already done that. What is your choice? Here, the first sample they give us is Q because that's the first option we're going to go live with is to quit. If the user's choice is Q, and notice how it's a capital Q, then set done to true. So if you say, yeah, I'm gonna quit, then yes, true will become, I'm actually done will become true, you are done. By doing something like user choice dot upper, this method that they're using right here is going to say, no matter if you have an uppercase or a lowercase letter, treat them equally. So if you put it in a Q uh, and lowercase or a Q and uppercase, and because it's already an uppercase in the menu, people might think, oh, I need to put in an uppercase Q. And you want them to use either one. So uh, after the user choice has been given, and then we're going to begin with the logic. I'll put in a uh, comment here, and I'm going to say game logic follows. So what's the game actually going to be doing with the information it gets? Like I said, it's first is going to be checking if user choice the upper is going to be Q, then we're going to tell it to quit the game. Test and make sure that you can quit out of the game and that it works with both upper and lower case. Great, so we begin our first uh, if. And it's uh, user underscore choice dot, and we're going to add the method, which was uh, upper, upper open close parentheses if user choice upper is equal to and I'll put in quotes Q and I'll use the uppercase Q because we're using the upper method it'll doesn't matter if it's lowercase or uppercase then do something we open up another block with the colon press enter to go to the next one and well we can do this in multiple ways the easiest way would be to just sort of print uh, you have quit the game, period. If you want to get snarky, if you want to add any other messages, that's up to you. I'm just going to say, well, for now, we'll just quit the game. And we can do that by, since we're inside of a loop, we'll just say that if it prints that, just break. That'll be the end of the loop and the end of the game. The game programming continues. So user sneak feedback. So we told them that they quit the game. Test and make sure that you can quit out of the game. So let's uh, test that. Run it. Our only option that works right now is Q. So let's Q and that's it. What is your choice Q? You have quit the game. Like I said, we can add additional we can put in additional messages later. For now, we just want to make sure that we can quit, and we can. So before, oh, let's try to see. That was with a lowercase q. If I were to run again and type in an uppercase q, you have quit the game. So the method is working correctly. Before your main program loop, create variables for miles traveled, uh, thirst and camel tiredness. So how are we going to keep up with the game? It's going to be with variables. We're going to have miles travel, thirst, camel tiredness. I'm just going to copy those words. And up here, when I was defining the variables to get them started, I know that I'm going to have miles traveled and I'm going to use the uh, snake case here. Miles underscore traveled is going to be equal to zero. So just initializing thirst is going to be equal to zero actually yeah zero because we haven't done anything and the tiredness of the camel it's also zero everybody's fresh uh, create a variable for the distance the natives have traveled so far so we're going to set them back 20 miles and there is some additional information in this lab at the very bottom. There's a couple of videos that I recommend you watch. They explain a little bit better uh, about what's going on with the miles. So we have traveled zero, but the natives, uh, let's say uh, natives underscore travel. 
is going to be equal to minus 20. So they're chasing us, but they're not quite on top of us. They're 20 miles behind. Create a variable for the distance the natives by. We just did that. See the videos. Create and set an initial number of drinks in the canteen. And author says that he uses three. And you can call it drinks, canteen, whatever. I'm going to, I go with canteen. And canteen uh, will be equal to three drinks that we have. Inside of the main program loop, we're going to add an else if to the if statement. So we have the if statement just checking to see uh, what the choice is. If they have used Q, then do this. But if they pick something else, that'll be at the same level as the if, else if, the uh, user choice. You know what? I'm just going to copy this. Else if user choice upper is equal to Q. And the next one, I do believe, is going to be for E for the status check. Uh, then do something else. They tell us to, uh, we're going to uh, tell the uh, status of the game, print out the miles traveled, the drinks in the canteen, and how far the natives are behind you. If you aren't sure how to calculate that, see the videos. Seriously, this is a section where a lot of people start down the wrong path. So we want to get this right, right away. So we're going to give a status report of the miles traveled, the, uh, um, the drinks and I think I don't know about the camel. I guess we don't really care about the camel until it's too late. So a user stand for that mouse travel, drinks and canteen, and how far they are behind you. So it's all about the player. We're going to print that the um, you have traveled. Space inside the quote and then a plus and give the string value of miles underneath underscore traveled plus you have traveled so many miles period go to the next line and print continue to print the statement and uh, say we have a canteen you have space and then add str open and canteen how many drinks left plus space drinks left is that really something we want to display yeah drinks and canteen and how far they are behind you it just seems like a lot of information to think about but i guess that's fine this is full status report maybe we can put all of that in a uh, function later I'll also print that the natives are, and here's where the math comes in. It's not a lot of math. It's, well, how many miles have you traveled? How many miles have they traveled? And you want to get the difference between them, right? So the natives are, and that's your, your miles traveled, uh, minus the... Uh, Natives travel, natives underscore traveled. And all of this is plus, I need this as the string, str, and do the math and then display the string. I think I closed enough parentheses. One, two open, one closes. So I can say plus um, the natives are so many miles behind you. Close the parentheses. Is that the full status report? That should be how far the natives are behind you. So that you get miles traveled, how many drinks you got, the natives are so far behind you. Let's test this really quick. By the way, this uh, little line here, I think that they're trying to tell you where 80 characters have gone by so that uh, if you were doing this in an old timey uh, monitor, you would already be running out of space to type and it would push you to the next line. So just be aware that your code is getting maybe a little long. That's why the original message only goes so far and they break the line to the next one so that it would uh, fit better in older monitors, which were new at the time, of course. 
I'm going to run that. And I know that we can quit, but I want to check the status. E. And it tells me you have traveled zero miles, you have three drinks left, and the natives are 20 miles behind you. I need a space between the 20 and the miles. Uh, and I'm probably going to add a, a space before you at the beginning and you at the end. Let me stop the code, or actually I can just tell it to quit. Q. And the uh, message here, I'm going to start with a uh, backslash N. You have traveled. I know that the so many miles behind you, there's a space missing here. And after the period in you, I'm going to add another slash N. I'm going to run this, ask for a status check, and it reads a little bit better. You have traveled zero miles, you have three drinks left, and it is 20 miles behind you. And I'll stop. Okay, the next thing, add an else if in your main program loop and handle if the user wants to stop for the night. So that choice is stop for the night is D. I'm going to I'm going to copy all of this code here just to make sure that when I paste it, Control V is in Victor, uh, I got it the right spacing. But I'm, then I can start to correct or at least change, right? If it's D, then uh, we're going to stop with the mile. It says print that the camel is happy. Uh, I'm going to say, first of all, before I say what the status of the camel is, uh, you have stopped for the night. to rest and in the second line I can say what they asked me to say which is your camel is rested and happy do I want to say that the natives are so far behind us maybe not yet because we need to do some math uh, print that the camel is happy uh, move the natives up a random amount from 7 to 14 or so so because although we stopped, the natives have not stopped, so they're going to move 7 to 14 miles while you rest. Uh, calculate random numbers in the loop just before you need them. So don't say give me a random number before the program starts because they will not change. Otherwise, every time that you ask for a random number, however, inside of the loop, you'll get a different number. At least that's the, um, that's the hope that we have. Uh, closing, causing your random numbers to stay the same the entire game if you if you do it at the beginning. Uh, in this particular lesson, before you get this far, there is um, a link to random numbers in the book. Uh, however, I can tell you that at the very beginning of the code, we need to import random. So we have to say Python, be ready to work with random numbers, and that's what happens when you import the random module so that when we get down here and we're resting for the night before the message of how far the the natives are behind us i'm going to uh, put in um, i'm going to do the math to make the uh, natives advance whenever you are um, looking for quick reference on python or just about any major programming language especially Python and uh, web development. Uh, you can type in a Google search with W3 and then Python, because that's the language, and then let's say random. And uh, I get right away random module and how it works and what all of our options are with that. I know that we're going to put in a range. So here's the range. Ran range returns a random number between the given range. This is how you would use it. You uh, import the random like we just did. In this case, they're printing a random number, but this is how you call it. It's going to be the random dot random range method. And then they're changing, or actually they're checking for a random number between 3 and 9. Our directions say that we want between 7 and 14 miles. So I could literally just copy this. You can type it. It'd be better to type it, but I'm lazy. Uh, so we're going to say that the uh, natives traveled. Natives underscore traveled. 
is going to be equal to whatever number it is right now plus a random number random dot ran range between 7 and 14 miles if you want them to move faster you would make these numbers larger so here then if they're at minus 20 and it picks 10 then it would go from minus 20 to 10 minus 10 rather they're still far behind you but they're getting closer then we will tell right away print the natives are so far behind you I don't know that this is necessarily part of the game but it's uh, good information to give the, uh, the player let me see if I haven't messed it up so we're going to uh, stop for the night press D and you have stop for the night to rest that your camel yeah, rested I need an is and happy the natives are eight miles behind you so while we were sleeping they moved quite a bit from 20 miles behind now they're eight miles behind I will stop the program progress here stop stop go back to my code so I think that after the period in quit I may want to add a space or at least a, a new line so in the code in Q right here after the period I'm going to add a backslash n I can close that random and I think that that's all I'm going to do for now everything else reads ok oh yeah the is your camel is rested and happy or both I'm going to copy all of this code again make sure that I'm in the right tab and the next thing we're going to change we just did D We're going to add that else if and I just copied and pasted one. Handle if the user wants to go ahead full speed, which I think is C. Uh, if the user does go forward and random amount between 10 and 20 inclusive. So our distance would then be increasing between 10 and 20 miles. Print how many miles the user travel. We're going to add one to the thirst because things are happening. We're getting hot in the desert. Add a random one to three to camel tiredness because we're moving fast the camel will get a little bit more tired and the natives will move 7 to 14 miles which is good to know because it's the same thing we've done before so so then I'm going to put a message to update the uh, user I'll keep that slash in and just say that your camel runs like the wind Look, it runs like the desert wind or something. Uh, and I don't know that we need to say anything else for now. The natives will be traveling. More importantly, we're traveling, so our miles traveled. Miles traveled is equal to miles traveled plus uh, random dot ran range and I think they said 10 to 20 between 10 and 20 so the camel tiredness I think that's what it's called camel oh equal tiredness underscore tiredness is equal to camel tiredness plus random and ran our range is going to be I think between one and three we said then there's a report that the natives are so far behind us as well but that we have moved so far okay so I'm going to copy this again because I'm if we just move fast I think the next one we're going to move slow And sure enough, we're going to be moving slow between 5 and 12 miles. So we can very much use the same code. Your camel, however, will not run like the desert wind. 
just say your camel Moses down the desert. We don't need an exclamation point. Uh, mass travel between 10 and 20 was the original one, and now we're going to be doing between 5 and 12. 5 and 12. The tiredness, however, should not be as much, so we don't need a random number. I think that we're just going to do one mile to the we're going to add one to the thirst and one to camel tiredness. Now, you're getting just as thirsty whether you go fast or slow because you're not doing the running. The camel, however, does not get as tired when you go slower or when he goes slower or she. I don't know what kind of a camel it is. So the tiredness will just be tiredness plus one. They just traveled. They move at the same speed. And we can still update the user how far behind they are. So let's run. I have an error here. What am I missing? Invalid syntax. I have one. Okay, I have too many parentheses here. And that was in D. And I need to change this to C. And then because I changed the quote, I corrected that before. Let's try to run again. Get another error. Still, no, I did not correct that. So I stop and run again. We know that we can get a status check with E. And uh, we can stop for the night with D. That still works. So I haven't messed up that code. They are nine miles behind us. Uh, we're going to try to check going at fast speed. So head full speed is C which I have messed up here. Wait. It's not moving so fast if we're moseying at that, so I have uh, screwed up my code. But I can fix it. I hit moderate speed is B, and nothing happened. So yeah, I have some, I have some issues with the, my copy and paste. And, okay, supercomputer, stop. So the first one is D, which is stop for the night. So here's the, the main problem that there we're going, we're going to run like the desert wind, it should be C. And then where we're going to mosey, it's actually B. Correct? Let's try to run this again. We've already checked the other stuff. Let's go ahead at full speed with C. And we run like the desert wind, and we've left them far behind. They're 32 miles behind us. We're going to slow down with B, and we mostly down the desert. And they're still just as far, almost, but we're still gaining a little bit of ground. So if I do C and C and C, things are happening behind the scenes. Also, the camel's getting more tired, but we haven't told the user that it has not become important yet. I'll stop the code. And move on to the next step. One of these days, I'll know it's just a tab here. Okay, so handle if user wants to go ahead and moderate speed. We've done that. Now we're going to handle if, if we want to get a drink of water from the canteen. If the user does, make sure there's enough drinks in the canteen. If there are, so that's if and another if. <clears throat> Subtract one drink and set the player's thirst to zero. So this one is going to be, we're going to be messing with the thirst, which starts at zero. Camel tiredness will not be affected, but the canteen has three drinks to begin with. So let's say, else if uh, user choice.upper is equal to and what is the drink? It's right in front of me. Uh, it's A. Then we're going to do another if. If the uh, drinks, right, is greater than zero, that is, if we have at least one drink, 
then you can drink it. If drinks are greater than zero, then our thirst will be reduced. Thirst is going to be equal to thirst minus one. You can also print a message that says, uh, you know, something like, ah, oh, that hit the spot. Or something like that. That's all if there's enough water. Otherwise, just like we're doing with the other logic, we'll say else, uh, because there's only two options. You either do one or you do the other. If this, do that. Else, do something else. Else, uh, print, you have no drinks left. Hopefully my logic is working okay. Let's run. And I have a syntax error because I just said else print because I need to open up a block, right? If you do one thing, there's one block, else open up another block. Make sure you have the spacing. Run. Okay. Let's go ahead at full speed. C. And let's drink some water. A. Okay. And I have a syntax error. Drinks is not defined. If drinks is greater than zero, because I don't have drinks, I have canteen. Thank you for letting me know, class out in the cloud, that doesn't know what I'm saying right now. So yes, I used the wrong um, variable. So that would explain a lot. Thirst and thirst if drinks, and that is of canteen. And now it recognizes it. Let's run this. And let's just drink some water. A. Uh, that hit the spot. I'll need a spacing in, in there. I'll do one drink. I'll do two drinks. I'll do three drinks. And that should be all of them. If I do A again. So my logic's not working. Because I still have water. It keeps on drinking, drinking, drinking. Because thirst is equal to thirst minus one. But at the same time, actually, that's the problem right here. Because we said that if you drink water, well, your thirst should be zero. There should be no thirst. And canteen should be equal then to uh, canteen minus one. Stop the other program from running. Let's try this again. A, A, that's three drinks. And now I have no drinks left. So that was the problem. I'm going to add a little bit of spacing here. Since I that hit the spot should be uh, an N before and an N after. So backslash N, backslash N. Same thing with the you have no drinks left. Slash N. Let's try to run this. And let's drink some water. That hit the spot. That hit the spot. That hit the spot. And the third one should be our last one. And you have no drinks left. Back to the code. Back to the book. So, uh, once again, moderate speed, drink from the canteen, the loop, you're in the loop, print, you are thirsty if the user's thirst is above four. Put this after your long if, else if, chain above. So, you are thirsty. So, what they're saying is at the very end here of that loop, although have to be with all the else if, else if, else if, and give the message if um, thirst is greater than four, then print, and I'll put in the slash n, you are thirsty exclamation point slash n so
So if I run the program and I go at any speed, B, B, we mostly down, we mostly down, we mostly down. We've gone four things four times, and I still have not seen the message that we're thirsty. Let's check the status with E. We have three drinks left, but it doesn't tell me my thirst, which is fine, except the logic is not working. Let's go back up. If thirst is greater than four, and where do they want us to put this? Put this after your long if else if chain above. So this is its own logic, right? It's not necessarily part of the game, but it should be inside of the game loop. So while we're still going, it should be two spaces in, and I have it four spaces in. One, two, and then this should be another two. Stop the program and run it. And let's go ahead. One, two, three, four, five. So by now I should be getting thirsty, but I'm not. Let's stop that. If thirst is greater than four, then print you are getting thirsty. I wonder if maybe the logic says to do it after that, but what if we do it at the beginning or right after what is your choice? I'm going to put it right after it gives us the uh, menu and put in just copy and paste it that while that's happening then check after you give the menu of things to do if you're thirsty before it asks what your choice is to announce that you're thirsty see if that works better let's run again i have an error expected an indented block because that's an if block right here. Run. We're going to go C, 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 C. I'm still not thirsty. But we're putting a lot of distance be behind us. Stop, stop, stop. Okay, well, let me try to stop this. Let's see, let's see where my logic is failing. See if I can debug this a little bit better. If thirst is greater than four, then print you are thirsty. Thirst is the right name. Thirst starts at zero. I think that what's happening is that every time that we're moving, I mean, I should be getting more thirsty, and I don't know that I'm necessarily getting too thirsty. I have thirst at the beginning and have thirst to reset and then just to check it. So, pardon my bad reading, I think that I've been skipping a major part of this program. Um, we add one to thirst. When we go head full speed, we add one to thirst. When we go at moderate speed, we will add so, and we only reset it when we rest. So that was my mistake here, big mistake, that every time that something happens, we move ahead, we have traveled. Uh, that's a status check, that's a quit check, and you have stopped. I don't think that you get more thirsty if you stop, right? Um, but let's check. No, but everywhere else, D, you have stopped for the night, C, you run like the wind or your camel does. I think then that the first thing that needs to happen is that thirst 
should be equal to thirst uh, plus one. So that you get thirsty, I'll copy that. In B, same thing, thirst plus one. Uh, not if you're going to drink water, because then your thirst is zero. So just when you move forward is when that happens. So let's move forward with C, 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 and C. You are thirsty. Finally, I get something. It's in the right place. Maybe there's too many spaces now, but I got the message that you are thirsty. I'm guessing then if that's the case, I don't need the space right before it. So you are thirsty right here. Because it's so far up. I guess if I'm going to do that, I might as well put it after, like they said. Just to keep in the spirit of the program. So else if use, so all of those else, etc., etc. Put that logic here that if thirst is greater than four, you are thirsty. And I'm guessing then if you die or if you quit or something, the um, game will make more, more sense. Let me stop that. I know I have an error somewhere. The indentation. Maybe I should have left well enough alone. Okay, let's try running that. I, I just fixed some spaces. Tabulation is so important in Python. C, 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 C. We're running, we're running, and now we're thirsty. Okay, so that worked, kind of. Still have too many spaces there, and that's gonna have to be okay for now or not I can just say don't put in that first space there okay sorry for that deviation um, who wants to go ahead and drink from the canteen we've done this we've done lots of steps and uh, you die of thirst if it's above six so make sure you create the code so that the program doesn't print both you're thirsty and you died of thirst use else if, if appropriate. So right here, if thirst is greater than four, you're thirsty. But what if you're really thirsty? And by that I mean, what if you're dying of thirst already? So let's check for that first. If thirst is greater than six, then we can say that you're done. Done is, well, before you're done, you have to say that you're dead. You died of thirst, exclamation point. And then done is true. And that'll finish the game. And you can break, that'll finish the game for sure. But Else if uh, thirst is about four, then we can print you're thirsty, right? Does that make sense? If the thirst is greater than six, you're dead. But if it's only greater than four, you're just thirsty. Let's see what happens. C, C. We're running, we're running. You're thirsty. I have an extra slash. So I know that's four, five, and six. I get an error. Or no, actually, you died of thirst because we didn't drink water. So that logic actually helps. If we're going to check first if it's greater than six, and then we're going to check if it's greater than four so that we're only thirsty. Slash N, I check those spaces. You are thirsty, you actually doesn't need an extra space, and you have died of thirst, it's not need an extra space. And I think that since your player is dead anyway, I don't need to rub anything in or give any additional information. Okay, so if your camel's getting tired, 
if it's above five. And so this is going to be similar logic. I'm going to let you figure that out. Okay. So I've helped you all the way to uh, step 18. I've talked for almost an hour, which is what I did in class. And then, uh, yeah, follow the same logic uh, to, uh, to, to, to make sure that the camel also has an end. Uh, we'll be getting tired just like you're getting thirsty, and then your camel is dead just like you would die if you didn't get water. If the natives have caught up, and we've been doing the math of how far behind you they are, so you know how to check if, if the natives are less than 15 miles behind you, print a message that says that they're getting close. If the user has traveled 200 miles, so make sure that you're checking also how miles you've traveled. If it's more than 200, then you win the game. The user win the game. And then 24 and 25 are optional things that you can add. So I walked you through most of this program. At least all of the logic is already there. And uh, you can you can do something with the code that you already have for the thirst to make sure the camel also has an end. And uh, you can also put in and figure out the rest of the logic to complete the game so that it runs. I would say at the very top of this, add a, uh, a comment with your name. If you're going to be turning it in using the collab, you can say that this is the uh, camel game. Uh, I think this is unit three. If you want to put in the date, that's fine. 2020 was a terrible year. We're in 2021. A worse year, maybe. Whatever the date is, when you turn it in, just put it there. Today's date, the actual date, and and that's it. Make sure that you make the um, the project shareable. Share with people so that uh, you can get a link and change to anyone with the link so that it's a public document and then you can copy the link and turn that in in eCampus. If you want also, you can copy all of this code because this is a running working game, all of it. I'm going to open up idle. You can open up whatever software you use. Bring this into the view here. Create a new file, file new. Punch in the code, just control V. Let's run it. I want to save it. So then I can say that this is going to be called camel game dot py. And here's my game. Let's run, 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 run. Of course, yours will have all the code where your camel will die. Not only you dying of thirst. The way to turn in the Python file, best practice is to go back to the assignment, click on the camel at the bottom, browse local files to so wherever you put them. Mine is right here. I didn't put in the .py, so I'll have to either rename it or just, you know, rename it. There's really no other way and then open that and submit it. I can't submit because I'm an instructor. And with that, I have one minute left in the hour and you've heard enough. Uh, best of luck with the rest of the code.